Still working. Yeah, just want you to just fire that up. Just okay. open it up, make it a wide format. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. And then uh, I'll start with this. Okay, so this is this is why this might get your attention. This this is a friend of mine. You've all probably met him before. Benjamin. Everybody, anybody met Ben before? But what what what? what y'all you, you know Ben? Yeah. Okay, good dude. Good dude. He's solid. What we're going to do at the end of this is because what I didn't want to do is I thank you so much. I didn't want to do something today that you couldn't apply today because that's boring, right? Nobody wants to go to one of these things. You hear somebody talk, you get some information, but it's information you got to apply way down the road. You want something you can actually put into or execute today. Like you can walk away from this today and do some of the things that we're gonna talk about today and you'll actually increase your probability of getting more of these or getting some of these, period. So putting my money where my mouth is, literally I told Reggie, I said, well, let's give five of these away today. So we're gonna give away $500, one to each of five people. But you kind of got to pay attention and you need to be a little bit of a visionary as we go through this. You got to be thinking a little bit deeper. We call it next level thinking. And in order to win these, those that are giving us next level thinking and actually putting their, their brain, their creative brain into action will end up with this. How does that happen and why is it you that should be able to pull this off? I'm going to come back to something that I think is a great precursor to everything I'm about to say, but I want to start with something a little bit deeper. I want you to think about your father or your mother. And now I want you to think about their fathers, their mothers. And then think about their fathers and their mothers. And then think about their fathers and their mothers. Now, none of those people are here today, right? In this room. Maybe some of those folks are still in this world, but they're not in, they're, they're, they're not in this room. But you're here. And because you're here, they're here. That's called DNA. It's called blood. It's called your lineage. It's your legacy. It's your heritage. If you think for a second that you don't have genius somewhere back there in your blood, in your heritage, in your lineage, you're wrong. Does anybody disagree with that? You've seen your grandmother toil. You've seen your grandfather work hard, your father work hard. I don't know my father personally, never seen him, never met the guy. I joke around and tell people if, if he's listening, you know, come on through. I just want to meet you. Just don't put me on uh, father support. <laughs> I don't want to take care of you. But the point I'm making is every one of you has got this inside of you already. It's there. Now, some of you today, you're just effing around. That's all you're doing because life is easy. It's about fun and laugh and sex and Netflix and and your boo, and your favorite this, and your favorite that. But eventually, the real world comes into play. And you gotta tap into that genius that's been passed down from generation to generation. Eventually, you're going to wake up out of the slumber, if you haven't already. Eventually, you're gonna connect the dots between this class and all the other learning experiences that you've had. And when you connect those dots, you'll go, oh, it's starting to make sense now. If I want these, I've got to tap into my inner greatness. I've got to tap into my previous 
experiences on this earth, which really came from other people, the people that came before you, that solved the problems of yesterday. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And hopefully your mother or father, or both, whoever raised you, never looked at you when you were two, three, five, six, ten, and said, you don't have any potential. You're not going to do anything that's going to make the world a better place. In fact, you've got zero to offer. Hopefully nobody ever told you that. I would argue that somewhere in your life, probably on the day you were born, somebody looked down at you with hopeful eyes and said, this is everything. This is the future. This is magnificence in the, it becoming. And here you are. Living, breathing, magnificence. But in order for you to take what you've got, you've got to learn to leverage it into the next things. A part of that is why I'm trying to get your attention right now is so that you can maybe just for a few minutes tap into them Ask yourself, what would they do with this next hour? What would they do in this moment? How much would they pay attention? From wherever they are right now, what do they want for you? If any of you believe that some of those folks are probably still watching you right now, what would they want you to do with these moments? So that's all I'm asking. It's a pretty simple ask. It may be complex for some of you because you're trying to turn it on. For the guys, you're still thinking about last night or what you're going to do tonight. Turn it off for a minute. Dial in. Because these are going to get handed out, and this might make a difference. And Reggie and I talked this morning about how we might be able to make an impression on you that you'll take with you for the rest of your lives. Life is a series of small events that add up to a big climax and I'll talk a little bit later today about your final five minutes on this earth your final five minutes on this earth and that's where it all ends folks and for every one of you it's promised there's not a thing you can do about it it's coming so what you do between now and then is up to you but then is not up to you that's not sad. That's happy. That's amazing. That means opportunity. So we want to think next level thoughts. So Reggie and I will be handing these out uh, later today. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, a little tag coming out. Yeah, I ripped it off this morning. So I don't know if you can see this. Uh, this says this is a game. And before we start, I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about why why we're playing the game. Why you're playing the game, because, yeah, that's perfect, that's fine with me. Are you all okay with that? Yeah. Okay, cool, all right, good. So, and I just hit the arrow thing, right, to go back and forth. Is that cool, uh, Randy? Yeah, and we'll submit the slides. And in fact, I'll put these slides in my, I'll give you my IG, and Reggie and I'll share them, you'll have all the slides, okay? So you guys can have them, you can put notes on them, whatever you wanna do. Um, and I want you to contribute to this. That's the other thing, is I'm going to go through today what I'm going to call 13 plays. And whether you're an athlete or not, these 13 plays, when we talk about calling a play, these 13 plays are plays that you can run today. You can run one of them, you can run six of them, you can run three. But these plays are plays that you can run and they will help you contribute or take steps forward to becoming whatever it is that you desire to be. So the goal is for you to leave here today with something you can actually work with. Some of you are actually going to run a play that we, we put up on the screen. You're going to run the play here. Because you ain't nothing but a coach in this game. But let's first talk about why you're playing. Why you're playing. Now this is an economics class. This is a money class. This is a financial class. Now this is a class that talks about commerce. This is a class that talks about supply and demand. All of those types of things. But one of the things people don't realize is there's a concept of behavioral economics. Does anybody understand that? Behavioral economics? Everybody thinks when I say economics, they think about money, dollar signs. 
But there's an aspect of economics of whether you guys realize it or not, you are born on one side of the ledger. And that side is you are a consumer the day you're born. You have no choice because you need milk and you need food and you need clothing and you need diapers. You are born a consumer. And that's why the world preys on you because you offer an opportunity to the large businesses, the small businesses, the medium-sized businesses that all want to sell you something because you are a consumer, that's the way you're born. On the other side of that ledger is producers. And you can be a manufacturer of a product or service, you can be a retailer, you can be a wholesaler, you can be a consultant, but you can be on that side. It's still a game, no matter what. The question is, why would you play? And that's what I want to start with because whether you guys know it right now, and I don't know if any of you have ever received a dollar from one of your parents or a guardian in the last 30 days. If anybody is still taking care of you, if anybody is still paying for school, if anybody is still funding or subsidizing your existence, that's not going to last long. Eventually, you will be the one taking care of you. And here's the crazy part about it. Today, I take care of my mom. My mom, who took care of me and brought me into the world, we've now flipped roles. I walk her to the car. I help her get into the car. I help her decorate her apartment. I send her money. I pay her rent. It flips, y'all. It totally flips, and you don't see it coming. But if you play the game right, you'll be prepared for that side of it. That might be one of your whys, is what are you going to do for your mom or dad when the time comes? And if you spend all your time effing around, you're not going to be prepared. It ain't going to happen. And then at the same time, you might have kids because at the same time I'm taking care of my mom, I'm also taking care of my daughter, who's a sophomore in college. And her $90,000 a year college tuition on top of my mom's bills are my responsibility but because I made a decision to make my why bigger than any of the problems that I was going to face, my results are able to handle any of the problems that I'm going to face. So I want to start before we get into this game is why you play it. And I want you to think for a minute, every single one of you, think for a minute about the people that you have a responsibility to. Not just yourself, because the world is bigger than you. I know some of you players think, nah, it's all about me and what's in my shorts. It's not. It's bigger than that. The world is bigger than you, and you have a responsibility to give back to it and to take care of some of the people that have taken care of you and pay that back. Do you want your mother or father being rolled over in a nursing home by somebody who doesn't know them? <coughs> Bed sores by somebody that really doesn't care? Now, the next time you think about, should I do my homework? Or should I be focused on my life and becoming an economic success? And you go, nah, I think I'm going to go out. I think I'm going to play video games. I'm going to hang out with homeboy or boo or whatever. I want you to think about your why. And ask yourself, is the why that you've got bigger than the fun that's presenting itself to you as an opportunity? Now, how many of you, based on those two comparisons, rolling mom over, bed sores, somebody you know, that you've got to foot the bill at a nursing home versus you going out? Which one are you going to choose? Taking care of? Mom. Now, it's a dramatic example, but I give the extreme example so that I can get you guys to tune into the fact that sometimes you've got to take this ish seriously. You can still have fun, and I had fun. Trust me, I had fun. I turned some bars into daycares. The bouncers, the bar, bartenders, everybody had to take care of me. I had a great time. I bought the bar. 
But at the same time, when it's time to dial in, you dial in. And you dial in because of your why. And so if you guys don't have a why right now, I want you to think about it as we get into playing this game. This is a game. Let's see how, so I just hit the arrows, Reg? Yeah. Let's see here. Sorry, bro. Oh, my bad. That's good. So, if you guys have dialed in on that a little bit, your why, everybody focuses on their what. What am I going to do? Why is what's going to keep you going when you hit rough times. Okay? So, plays win more games than players. Nobody thinks about this. Plays win more games than players. Why does that matter? A few years ago, I met a guy. Uh, that I'd admire because I'm a, a fan of organizations. I've never been, as much as I might love the Cowboys, or as much as I might love the Mavericks, or as much as I might love the New England Patriots, or the Spurs, or whoever, I've always been a fan of organizations more than I've been a fan of players, individual players. It's about teams. One of the greatest teams ever right now is the Kardashians. That's a team. They run plays. You guys know, and I know, that there are women, probably in this room, that are just as beautiful, have just as much in their heart, have just as much to offer as any of the Kardashians. And these days, in the world of filters, in the world of makeup, in the world of anybody can achieve those types of looks. It's possible. But that's a team. And they run plays and plays win more games than individual players. And the sooner you start accepting that and say, okay, I'm gonna call plays. So I met this guy one time, I walked up to him like, and I typically don't walk up to people that are famous because I really don't care to bother them. But I said, hey, how you doing? And I said, I want you to know that I'm very impressed with you and very impressed with how you've been able to succeed this long. And he goes, how you doing, I'm Greg. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm Justin was Greg Popovich from San Antonio Spurs. And one of the things about Greg Popovich, if you know what he's done, he's done it with fairly average people. Manu Ginobili was a sixth man. And I don't want to turn this into a sports thing, but what I'm saying is it didn't matter who was out there on the court. Pop was going to make the playoffs. Why? Because of plays. Attention to detail. His focus, no different than the Kardashians, no different than any other winning organization out there. Amazon, Google, Facebook, they're calling plays. So you have to understand that you as an individual are only going to be as strong or have as good of output as the plays that you're calling. Today I want to give you some plays that you can actually call. You can run these plays. This is a game. Run these plays. For my fellas that have played organized basketball or football, or my ladies that have played organized basketball or volleyball or any of this, any of you that have been in any type of competition, drama, theatrics, any of that, it's all plays, y'all. That's all people are calling. You call a play. And until the last five minutes of your life, you keep, and I, want, I almost cussed, <laughs> you keep fucking calling plays. That's all this is, y'all. Call plays. It's a game. It's your game. You're the coach. Call a play, right? These are the 13 plays, at least for me. Next year will mark my 10th year as owner if I just got hit. Why am I credible? I'm really not. Look, I'm a lawyer, but I will tell you, I was a subpar student. I failed seventh grade. I got kicked out of summer school because I failed seventh grade, went to summer school, got in a fight at summer school, and they kicked me out. They somehow advanced me. I don't know how that happened. I ended up going to three different high schools in three different states. I moved out of my house at the age of 16. I had my first child at the age of 20. She was pregnant when I was 19. And I moved on to do a bunch of other things that a lot of people would consider subpar, below average. But I always had an appetite. And so hopefully, I'm dialing into some of y'all's appetites right now for success. 
And so I want you to know what makes me credible. I don't know. I'm an average person. But I'm trying to do above average things. And if you look around the world, look around the world right now. Look in, in fact, look in this room. You're going to see some people, their eyes are closing because they're falling asleep. Look around this room and you'll see some people that made last night more important than today. That's what the world's made for, by the way. Shirts come in small, medium, and large. Extra large now. The reason they do is because these are the average sizes. Everything in the world is made for the average person. And if you look around, most people are average. Which means success is not probable. Success is not something that's likely going to happen because most people just get an average result. That's how it's all set up. I just decided that I was going to try to do above average things. As an average person, I was going to try to do above average things. In the last year, I've purchased about $7 million in real estate. I never thought I would do anything like that. Never. But I, at a certain point in time, said I'm going to call plays. And one of the plays I'm going to call is I'm going to buy real estate. And I figured out how to do it. So there we are. So here's 13 plays that you can call. OK, first one. First play, I want you to accept something. I want you to accept something. Which one of y'all wants to answer a question? My man over here, all right? When is the next time, the next time that you will be completely still, that you will not move at all, that there will be literally no movement in your body, that your body will no longer be changing or evolving? When is the next time that's going to happen? When I die. When you die. Thank you. That means that until that point in time, he's going to be changing. People talk about perfection and they say, well, I'm just looking for the perfect moment. I'm looking for the perfect time. I'm looking for the perfect situation. Perfect is a static state. It's unchanging. The way that definition works, perfect is this place you arrive where everything is like this. It's just, just like that and it just stays that way. Folks, there is no perfect other than change. The real perfection that you have to seek in this world is change, evolution. Right now your hair is growing, your nails are growing, your face is aging, your body's you know, probably digesting food and it's moving through and eventually that's gonna end up in the sewer system with everybody else's digested food. This types of change and these biological things that are happening right now continue to happen and this change will continue to happen until you what, my friend? Until you die. Change is the only perfection that you can expect. So if that's the case, in your academic career, what can you expect? Change. change. In your professional career, what can you expect? Change. In your relationships, what can you expect? Change. And the sooner that you accept the fact that change is what's coming, that that is perfect, that change is what you want, you start asking for change. And you start calling plays around it. Somebody asked me one time, what do you think the definition of an entrepreneur is? And I said, what do you think it is? And they said, well, it's somebody that takes on risk in business. Do you all agree with that? OK. I said, no, I think it's somebody that navigates around it. Because there's a lot of people that call themselves entrepreneurs. You see it all over Instagram. You see it all over Facebook, whatever social media. You're on. How many times do you see entrepreneur life? Entrepreneur again. And those people have zero dollars in the bank. That's the fake it till you make it stuff. And I get that. And I could go on a rant about that forever. But the reality is anybody can call themselves an entrepreneur. Successful entrepreneurship means you're trading your time or your money for what? More money and more time. And you're actually seeing an ROI on it. That's how you know you're a successful entrepreneur, because you're coming up. Calling yourself an entrepreneur doesn't mean you're an entrepreneur. 
The real entrepreneurs are those that successfully navigate around risk. And so if we accept the fact that change is going to be happening all the time, then it makes it a lot easier for us to navigate around all of this. So there's your first one. Accept that. Want change. Want these types of challenges. Next, get uncomfortable. Quit trying to be comfortable all the time. I misspelled the word, words uncomfortable, and I said uncomfortable motherfucker. <laughs> uncomfortable motherfucker. And for many years on my door, at I just got hit in our building, people would walk through and they would see my door and everybody would have so-and-so attorney, so-and-so attorney, so-and-so paralegal, this and that, and my door said uncomfortable motherfucker. Dog, you're built, miss, ma'am, lady, gentlemen, you guys are built for uncomfortable. Remember we talked about, we said go back to your lineage. You think all the people that came before you were comfortable? You think comfort put you in this room? You think your dad was comfortable the whole time? You think your mom's comfortable the whole time? Embracing the uncomfortable parts about life is what makes other parts of life comfortable. You have to take the difficult path. When you're going down that path right now and you come to the fork in the road and you will three, four, 10, 20 times today, which path is most likely to lead you to a good result? The comfortable path or the uncomfortable path? The uncomfortable path. There's no doubt about it. So the sooner you say, I want to be uncomfortable, is as soon as you say, I want the ball in the last couple seconds of the game, or I want to be the one to fly that spaceship, or I want to be the one in the boardroom making the difficult decision for this company, which might be mine. You want that uncomfortable position. That doesn't have to be public, it could be private. It could be you making decisions behind closed doors. But you want to be uncomfortable. Because if you're making uncomfortable choices, you're like that light that's on in downtown Dallas at 8.30 p.m. If you ever drive through downtown sometimes, I want you to look up at the buildings and see all the lights that are off. And then look and you see that one or two or three lights on, one of those big tall buildings. You know who's in that room? Somebody that's uncomfortable. Somebody that's making big decisions. Somebody that's making things happen. That's where it's at. And you're built for it. Again, remember where you came from. So there's one, another one. Here we go. Memorize your core values. Every one of you's probably heard that word before, values. Core values is another phrase that you hear. It's passed around a lot. Sounds corny as hell, doesn't it? Memorize your values. What are your values? Nobody wants to hear that. You don't. But whether you realize it or not, first of all, people don't really have an accurate definition of values. Your values, folks, are not your goals. Your values are not where you're trying to go in life. Your values are part of the framework that, that motivates, that informs your goals. It instructs the decisions that you make. And let me tell you one of the best decisions I've ever made in the last 10 years, and this has affected me in relationships, this has affected me both, both personal and business, it's impacted me in many, many situations, and that is I made the decision that I was never going to compromise my values. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made. What does that mean? It means if a guy is the type of dude that if I'm sitting in a meeting with a dude and we're talking business, business, and a woman walks by and his eyes go like this as she walks by while we're talking business, that deal's off. I'm not doing business with a man that thinks women are more important than his checking account. You're immature. You're young. 
you're focused on the wrong things. Because this, gentlemen, is below this for a reason. And oh, by the way, this is above this. What's in your heart? And then this is where proper business is done. And this is way too far from this and this, ladies and gentlemen, for you to spend time down here when you should be up here. When you make that decision from a value perspective, your life changes. Because oh, by the way, let me just tell you, you could satisfy all this and this later on. And it's a lot easier when you're on a 64-foot catamaran with Slim Thug to have a fantastic time, which happened to be where I was earlier this year. And it was me, Slim Thug, and 10 women. One of them was my wife. We had a great time. Music, food, we had a chef. You want to have a lifestyle? You have values first. I don't place any priority over that particular event, over any, any of the other things. Oh, by the way, I would not have done that if I hadn't saved first. I want you to do yourself a favor and look up values. Look them up. Google values. What are they? And decide which ones apply to you. And start to make decisions based on your values. Say, these are my five values. And don't ever let any person in this world make you compromise your values once you've decided what they are. People will do that all the time. Sometimes it's because their values are different. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make them a bad person. It just means their values are inconsistent with you. And the worst thing you can ever do is go into a partnership of any type, whether it be dating, a marriage, or a business relationship with somebody that has a different set of values than you. If you value honesty and they don't, or you value trust and they don't, you're going into business with the wrong person. Sometimes you're looking at the money going, I want to make money, man. I'm a partner with these people. I'm going to do this with her because the money. Remember that the fish sees the bait, not the hook. If you let your values instruct you, you will make sure that you always see the hook. Preview your final five. We talked about that a minute ago. I want you guys to start making decisions based on your final five minutes of life. Start making decisions based on your final five minutes of life. If you simply ask yourself this question, will I be happy with this decision in my last five minutes? Will I look back at what I'm about to do and say, I did the right thing. That was, man, I'm so glad I decided to do that. Now it's a little bit stoic. Nobody really wants to think about the final five minutes, but God willing, you're going to be aware of it. You'll be fully there. You'll have all of your sense, and you'll be able to say, man, what a great life. What a great ride. But imagine if you started making decisions for yourself based on your final five minutes of life and what you'll think about this. Because, oh, by the way, folks, that's the final five minutes of the game. It's either going to be confetti coming down from the ceilings or you're going to be walking back to the locker room with your head down. Those are your two options. So if you start making some decisions right now based on that, you're going to be ahead. Eliminate the word failure from your vocabulary. Take it out. Failure does not exist. This is a game, and you do what until the game, the time runs out on the clock. What do you do? What did I say earlier? Call plays. You keep calling plays. There is no failure. If anybody ever says, oh, you failed, or you say, oh, I failed at that. No, you didn't. There's a difference. F-A-I-L is not that far away from F-A-L-L. I. That's the letter. Once you accept responsibility for that moment, take the eye out. You didn't fail, it was a fall. Get your ass back up. It was just a fall, it was a misstep. Poised, confident, get up, call another play. Don't let these things get you down in life, the situations that you go through. Because if you're gonna be a successful business owner, entrepreneur, whatever it is, you're going to fall. 
But now, going into it, expect change, embrace the perfection of change, get uncomfortable, all that, expect that you're going to fall and get back up. Take that word failure out of your vocabulary. Get greedy. Some people will tell you, your grandmother will tell you, oh, you, you greedy, you greedy. Uh, don't be so greedy. People say, well, you're just a business person. You just want to make money, whatever. Let me tell you something. I've given away, last year, we actually bought a house and gave it to somebody. Hell, I didn't know I would ever own a house, much less buy a house. We bought a house, we totally remodeled it, and we gave it to somebody. If I was never greedy, I would never be able to give because you can't give what you don't have. And what people will do in your life is they want your time. She wants your time. He wants your time. They want your time. They want you to do it their way. But in many instances, the people that choose you, the reason they choose you is because what you can offer. And then they stop you or prevent you or impede your ability to offer it because they just want your time. And if you don't have a good greedy, I'm not talking about a bad greedy, I'm talking about a good greedy inside of you, then you're not gonna, you're not gonna pass this test, y'all. That play is a play you can't run. You've gotta spend a certain amount of time making sure that you're getting a yield on your time because you're the only one that's gonna be laying in that casket. They're not gonna be there with you. None of these people saying, oh, you're greedy. None of them are going to be laying in the casket with you. They don't make group caskets. There's not seating for five. It's not a vacation for six to heaven. It's just you. And so go ahead and get good greedy and start getting things for yourself so that you can give things, so that you can help people. Is that fair? Do you understand where I'm going? Is anybody unclear on that? All right. Put a price tag on your time. That's sort of part and parcel to get greedy. The reason I'm saying put a price tag on your time is let me explain something to you. And I want your attention. You know why they call it pay attention? Because whether you pay with time or you pay with money, you're paying. In the business world, in the world that Reggie talks about with you guys, those are the only two resources that are available. Time and money. That's all you guys have to offer. Every single one of you. There is nothing that you have to offer in the business world other than those two things time and money. But what we do easily is we start to say, well, it ain't no money. I'm not paying for it. Yes, you are. And here's the crazy thing about it. Money, you can lose it. I lost $90,000 in one day in the stock market, day trading. I made $90,000 back in one day in the stock market, day trading. If you lose 90,000 minutes, can you make it back? You can't get that back. It's the one resource, it's the one commodity that you don't have an unlimited supply of. You're very limited, and as a matter of fact, you have no clue when your final five minutes is coming. It may come next year. I hope it doesn't. It may come five years from now. I hope it doesn't. It may come 20 years from now. I hope, but nobody knows the great mystery of life when your final five minutes will come. So if you start to put an actual price tag on your time, not just your money, but your time, now you start to think about the people that you're spending time with and saying, am I spending time with you for no reason at all? Or am I spending time with you because it's improving your life and mine? Or am I just improving your life? If I'm in a conference room, am I here for no reason at all? If I'm in a meeting, am I here for no reason? Because I'm giving time. I'm in this room right now going, three, four, five of you are going to take this message I'm giving you today, and you're going to put it into effect, 
and a few years from now, you're going to be giving away a home. Or maybe better yet, you lose $90,000 in one day. Maybe lose $91,000 in one day, and I won't feel as bad about my 90. I'll do me. But the, the fact of the matter is, you have to put a price tag in your time. Self-educate, self-exam. You guys have all used the word mentor. I guarantee you that you've used the word mentor. Strike that, I'm gonna come back. The way this class is situated right now, row, 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 row. All of y'all are here. If everybody in this room is receiving my message right now, if everybody in this room is listening to what I'm saying, which one of you has an advantage over the other? Nobody. The most valuable thing in the world that you can do with your time is get information. That's the best thing you can trade for your time. Because information turns to money. Information turns to happiness. Information turns to you multiplying your talents, your potential. But if all of you are getting this information at the exact same time, you just said it, nobody has an advantage. This is the way our educational system is set up. But let me tell you, if I wanna have more than you, then I've got to know more than you. And if you want to know more than the other people in this room, what do you have to do? You got to self-educate. It's the only way you'll ever have an advantage. Now, some of you, you know, I'm good, you know, I'm cool, you know, everything's good for me in the world, blah, 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 I get it. I've been there before, but you're going to have average shit. Welcome to an average world. Then there's others of you who go, you know what, I'm cool, I'm good, but I want, I want better than average shit. And for those of you that say that, that approach it that way, then you'll realize that you have to educate yourself. You can't rely on Mountain View or Reggie or me. You've got to educate yourself so that you can have more information than the person you're next to. There's no reason for you to ever walk into a business meeting and not know as much or more than the person you're meeting with. Or not know the proper questions to ask, and we'll get into questions here in a second. Self-educate, and then exam yourself. Give yourself a pop quiz on it. Some of you would rather shoot Instagram videos or Snap videos that are really a waste of time, in many instances, in business, than you would rather videotape yourself giving a speech that you don't post. That's a test. Give yourself an exam. Put that phone up and give your speech. Give your elevator pitch. Then rewind it, do it again. I used to rap, I used to freestyle. You recorded it, you didn't like it, you recorded it again. I played sports. You run a play you don't like, you call another play. How come we don't practice business like that? How come you don't test yourself like that? Practice is free. It's going to cost you something once you get into the real world. Practice. Pop test. Quiz. Quiz yourself. Become an excellent speaker. Become an excellent presenter. Become a nerd. And I'll get to that here in a second. Be a nerd at something. Okay, this is the toughest one for me. Very difficult for me. Because when I was in high school, uh, I got kicked out of school as a sophomore and uh, showed back up at the school afterwards, me and my buddy, pistol, some weapons. It was us against probably about 10, 11 guys. I was fortunate that the bus driver on the, that was that they when they got on the bus, the bus driver saw us standing there, me and my buddy, and the bus driver said, "No, nah, I'm not going to let this go down today," and drove off. And I've been involved in several of those situations. I was in a car one time at night, and we were driving, and the guys were actually looking for somebody to rob. 
and the conversation was a little bit like, we need some money. And I'm sitting in the seat and the guys are driving, they're looking for somebody on the street at night and we come along, come across this guy who's got like a postman bag or parcel bag over his shoulder like this in the bag, and we're like, let's rob him. You know, it's not a good use of time. And I certainly wouldn't be here right now if that had happened. But one of the things that happens is peer pressure, is the pressure from the outside world. I always wanted to be cool. I wanted people to see me as cool. Now I've realized that I could be very cool, I could still whoop your ass, and I can still be a nerd at something. Be a nerd at something. If you ain't smart as hell about one thing, you're not headed down the right path. What do you know more of than anybody else? Pick one thing, guys, at least one thing, ladies, and be a nerd at it. Because that's gonna give you a strategic advantage over the other people. Remember, I've gotta know more than you if I wanna have more than you. Too many people just know the same stuff. And be comfortable with that peer pressure. If your homeboys, your homegirls, your friends, or whatever, why are you talking like that? Why you know so much? For me, black people, you know, black folks, and I've always had black friends, they would say, why are you talking like you're white? Well, because the dollar bill talks like that in many instances, so I'm gonna go ahead and learn that language. Because I want the dollar bill. So that's why. But then I can still talk like you and us when we get in that particular scenario. But I wanted to be a nerd at something. Today I'm a nerd in many different areas and I can show you my bank account. And I said before on Instagram, if you forced a lot of you guys or these so-called influencers to use their bank account balance as their username, instead of their username, they actually gotta put that negative ass bank account balance up as their username? How many likes would you get? How many followers would you get then? <laughs> the nerds are making money, folks. And if you, if you haven't seen it yet, look around. Bill Gates is a nerd. The guys who were in oil, when I was coming up, everybody talked about oil. Oil guy, he's a rich oil man. Right now, you got Bill Gates, uh, what's his name, Mark uh, Zuckerberg, uh, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos just gave $30 billion to his ex-wife. $30 billion to his ex-wife. And she's smart too. And oh, by the way, Melinda Gates, Bill wouldn't have married her if she wasn't a nerd. Their cars were in the parking lot at the same time at Microsoft, late at night. Those lights were on and those two were there working. Melinda Gates would be successful with or without Bill Gates. Guarantee you. Michelle Obama would be successful with or without Barack Obama. Guarantee you. We could go on and on. Become a nerd at something and be comfortable. And remember, value-based, don't ever let anybody stop you or make you feel uncomfortable for your nerdiness. Tell them, move on. Tell them, I'll hire you one day with your comedic ass. So there you go. <laughs> Consult your mentor. Too many times, y'all, every single one of you's got a phone in your hand right now or somewhere close to you. Somewhere in this room, there's somebody that has this phone in front of them right now looking at anything but their mentor. Your mentor is called the Omnibox. Anybody know what an Omnibox is? You've typed into it a thousand times in the last month. It's the search bar. The Omnibox owns you when you want to consume. When you're looking for pizza, when you're looking for the club, when you're looking for the right hair care product, when you're looking for the right shoes, the right purse, the right trip. The Omnibox is the first place you go. But when you need information, learn, you need to become more educated, you don't type it into the Omnibox. And here it is, right here, you're holding the phone. If you lost your phone today, you'd lose your damn mind. You wouldn't know what happened, it'd be like your heart fell out of your body. You'd cease to exist. How are people gonna know I'm alive? 
if I don't do this, if I don't have my phone. That phone is technology, and that should be your number one mentor. There's times I go to meetings now. I bought a building this year. I bought it on three acres. I bought a 50,000 square foot building. And I'm going to meetings with people about a roof or about HVAC, the air conditioning system in the building, whatever. And I know nothing about this stuff. I go to the Omnibox, search, type in YouTube. I watched a damn video, hesitant to say this, but I watched the video on the way to the meeting. And you know, I walked in the meeting. Are you a minority, for those of you? Sometimes people already don't expect for you to be smart. They already, there's already, if you're a woman, a minority, there's already this sort of ego, egotistic thing or arrogance with business owners sometimes. Like, you ain't gonna know anything about an air conditioning system. So I went in there and started talking about the condenser unit and the compressor and uh, where the circuit board was and whether or not we had plenum returns and where the supply was. And the guy was like, yeah, oh. Wow. I was like, yeah, man, I'm nerd, like instant nerd now. Go to that Omnibox, hit the search button, learn about something then. Work hard on the question before you work hard on the answer. A lot of times, folks, we're asking the wrong questions. That's why you're not getting the right outcome. If you've ever experienced something like this, if you've ever worked hard for something, gotten it, and were no better off after all, you probably asked the wrong question to begin with. And it's kind of like looking for your keys. Do you continue to look for your keys after you find them? And once you find them, you stop looking, right? What's the point of looking after you find them? That's the same way it works with the questions we ask in life. Once you guys think you got the answer, you stop asking. But quite often, you're not asking the right questions. You gotta make the questions more difficult. And I, I, I could go on and on about that. Maybe we'll talk about it on the web. We gotta get doubt the play not the player. That's the final slide. Doubt is one of these amazing things. Some of you uh, will probably, at some point in time, the light will come on in your head with what I'm about to say. You can doubt your play, but you don't doubt yourself. And a lot of times in life, you're doubting yourself. And it's because you're not prepared, it's because you don't have the right questions, it's because you haven't uh, done the, the proper practice, and I get that. But once you've gone through all these previous slides, you shouldn't be doubting yourself. You should be confident with you. And then what you do is you say, okay, now, all I have to do is make sure I call the right play. And that's where you're gonna have a little bit of a struggle. Doubt is one of these amazing things because It can have you believe that you are a product of this one choice instead of a product of all your choices. You are the result of all of your choices. But sometimes you're trucking through life and you come to a decision, a business decision, an academic decision, and you got this one difficult choice. And if you've ever wrestled with that, you go, oh, I don't want to make the wrong decision. I don't, want to make, I don't want to go down the wrong path. And it'll have you thinking, doubt will have you believing that that one decision is going to define who you are. It's not. It's all of the decisions that define who you are. So don't let doubt take you over. You want to doubt the play, not the player. And you do that by making sure you're prepared. Now these things are things that we're gonna post. I don't know if it went over your head or not. Some of you it probably made sense. But connecting this with the economic side of things for you is where you're gonna make the next leg up. And believe it or not, this school right now, you're paying for it, you should be getting a return on it. And if you start incorporating these things into it and setting your sights on, a $75,000 a year, a $100,000 a year, a $200,000 a year, a $500,000 a year. Then you'll see the return on these and you'll start to see the way that they'll play in your life. Running these plays will help you win. So there we have it. Now, we got to make this quick. Yeah. Um, so it's all yours. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is, um, before we, we're running out of time here, what we're going to do is, um, the
13 plays that Justin just went over today, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a competition with all of you that are in the class. So you're gonna have to come up with some additional- Five plays. Five plays in addition to his 13. And so all of you that wanna participate, what you're gonna do is you're gonna send those in. Now what I want you to do is I want you to think long and hard about it. Because if it's any BS, then you're not gonna win, okay? So you're gonna be competing and it has to match with the same integrity, with the same vision in terms of success, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that up and for the people that have the top five, you're gonna be awarded 100 bucks. Okay? That's how we're gonna do that. So instead of one person getting $500, you're gonna have five people that are gonna be able to get $100. Okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide more e details about that when me and Justin, we're gonna coerce a little bit more about the details and how we wanna do it. So stay tuned for that, and you're gonna get that, okay? And the plan is uh, we'll put it, we'll put these videos up on me, probably me and your uh, IG. Yeah. We'll put these videos up on the IG. When you guys submit yours, what I'm gonna do is change the slide. I'll name the rule after you. So the play will be your play. And then we'll add it to the slide so you'll be on my IG and on, on Reggie's IG as, a, as an additional play that somebody can run. So if we got a Teresa in the room, and Teresa gives us a play that we say that's a damn good play, we want to call that, sometimes in life, we're going to add it, and it's the Teresa rule, and we'll just add it to the carousel as the rules, and those will go out to the world. So think long and hard about it, and then next week, Reggie's already got the C notes here, Ben, so your Ben is waiting for you. Okay, is that fair? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So let me ask you a question. How many of you right now can use 50 bucks? All right. <laughs> so pull out your phone. Yeah, we running over, but we talking business. So you about to give away $50? Yeah. They gonna play with Justin Lloyd. Oh wow, this is crazy. This is serious. Are they doing like questions and stuff on yeah. it right now? Yeah, with you. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Man. Is that it? Yeah. Right, let's go. All right, let's start. Six questions. First question. What age did Justin start his first corporation? Okay. All right. So, at the beginning of the class, I said this information. 1991. Justin started his first his first corporation in 19. All right. Molly in the lead. Next question. We're gonna go through these real fast. Okay. <laughs> Okay, 
So his first position with the Gossi Martin firm was a law clerk. Okay, next question. This is from today's presentation. So entrepreneurs are known to successfully navigate around what? Let's go. I'm trying to put those in. Oh, that shit is cool, man. Come on, let's go. What school was he accepted into law school at? Play number one. Oh, oh, oh. Play number 